Income Tax 2021-2022 Tax Software HSA Deduction Moving Expenses Deductible Part of Self-Employment Tax and Self-Employed SEP Simple and Qualified Plans Get ready to get refunds to the max Diving into Income Tax 2021-2022 Lacert Tax Software. You don't need access to tax software to follow along, but you might want to have access to the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Our starting point being the single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210, 100,000 on the W-2 income, 12,550 standard deduction, 87,450 the taxable income, mirroring that over here on our tax worksheet, income at the 100,000 standard deduction the 12550 87450 taxable income relying on the software for page 2 to calculate the tax at at this point 1515 which we're mirroring over here the 1515 that's the starting point back to page 1 we're focused on at this point at line 10 the adjustments to income which comes from schedule 1 line number 26 let's go check out schedule one line number 26 here's schedule one looking at page number two so part two we're focused down here health savings account deduction now this might not be one that you see all the time and people might have this kind of tied to their employer situation in which case it might be basically uh taken care of hopefully by the the employer possibly with the reporting of the w-2 but if it is applicable and you have more questions about it then you might want to go to the instructions for form 8889 which you can find in the irs website irs.gov we could jump to that here i can say let's go on and jump on over this is one you might not see all the time and sometimes there might be a health savings account possibly that's going to be tied to the employer situation as well in which case it might be something that's going to be taken care of at least in part with the reporting of the w-2 form so if there's a question about this one you might want to look at the instructions for form 8889 general concept being an hsa allows you to make annual deductible contributions up to 3600 for individual plans or up to 7200 for family plans as of 2021 to help pay out-of-pocket medical expenses in the future if you're age 55 or older you can make an additional 1000 catch-up contributions so there's some restrictions however so not all taxpayers are eligible to have an hsa to qualify you must be enrolled in a health savings plan that imposes high deductibles that meet or exceed irs required amounts so there's some general feed, general ideas about that you could go into the instructions for the form in more detail and kind of start your research if you've got questions about it i'm going to jump on over there let's do a jump on over and I'm just, I'm going to say it's a family plan. And you'll note that if I max out the family plan up top, well, let's, say, let's call it a, a, a self-only plan to start off with. And if I max it out, I'm going to max it out and then go on over to the forms. That's going to give us that 3,600. So the 3,600, if I scroll down, populates down here. It's going to pull to the first page of the form 1040. So now it's in the first page of the form 1040. We also, by the way, have the form uh, 8889 the health savings accounts which you could do more research on the instructions for that form and then on the first page of the 1040 we got the 3600 so the total income is going down by the adjustments we made 3600 to the 16 to the 96400 which we can mirror over here on our tax formula 100,000 adjustments is going to be in the second tab I've got the HSA contribution so we're going to say it's going to be then for what did i say 3600 and so if i go back on over to page one 100,000 minus 3600 the 96400 12550 on the standard deduction gets us to the 83 83850 bringing that over to the page one 83850 on the taxable income page number two calculating the tax at the 14201 now so if i go back on over this is going to be 14201 so there is that if i go back to the software and i was saying it was a family plan that i maxed out i'm saying i want you to take the max then i can see that on schedule one page number two seven thousand two hundred pulling over to the 1040 the 1040 there's the seven thousand two getting us to the 92 8 twelve thousand five fifty still in the standard deduction getting us to the eighty thousand two hundred and fifty okay let's go back to the starting point i'm going to go back on over and remove that remove that going to go back to the forms back to the forms going into the schedule one 
page number two, schedule one, page uh, number two, adjustments to income. Next, we have the moving expenses. This is one that's very much more like, unlikely that you're going to see unless you're working with members of the armed forces. And even then, they're, they're oftentimes going to be reimbursed for moving expenses. The government's usually fairly good about that. And so they, they might not even be applicable at that point. Everything should be taken care of through the reporting by, in essence, the employer on the W-2 in that instance. It used to be that you had moving expenses if you changed jobs, which was more likely. So, so again, less likely to see that. If you do, then you could go on over here and you might get questions about what it was in the past. And you say, well, they, yeah, they restricted that changing jobs. You don't have the same kind of deduction that you had in the past. It's restricted to basically military members. So I'm going to say armed forces move due to permanent change. So that's going to be the qualificating factor. And then you've got the different items that might be applied to it. You could have a mileage type of calculation that you might need to go into, but I'm just going to go lodging and travel for now and then go back to the forms if applicable. Then it's going to be populated here on the schedule one. You can also have another schedule that is populated that's feeding into the schedule one, the 3903, which if you wanted to look in this into more detail, if you think it might be applicable and you're not sure, you'd want to look at the instructions for form 3903. That's probably the first place to go to, to do your research on that. That feeds into the schedule one, page number two, the 1000, 1000 feeding into the 1040, 1040 now having that 1000, bringing the AGI down to the 99,000, 12,550 still on the standard deduction, getting us to the 86,450. We can mirror that on our worksheet saying we have the adjustments over here. Let's add another adjustment and we're gonna call this one, what can I call this one? Page number two, we're going to say moving expenses, armed forces moving. Let's say armed forces. We'll kind of abbreviate it. Did I spell it right? Did I spell it right this time? It's like the first time since I've been doing these. If I did, I did spell it right. Even, even I get it right once in a while. 1,000 and we'll delete this one. We'll make that blue, blue and bordered and then sum this up so it picks up that cell pick that cell up pick it up and then we're going to go back to the first tab so 1000 uh subtracted 99000 adjusted gross income 12550 standard deduction getting us to the 80 uh, 6450 86450 tying out to the to the 1040 page 2 then calculating the tax at the 14775 14775 so there is that one Let's go back on over. Let's go back to the to the first one. This one's going to be kind of like the more complex one where we're going to have to change our income levels to self-employed. So I'm going to go back on over. Let's take this one out back to the starting point. And so now let's say I'm going back in schedule one, page number two, and we want the the uh, self-employed. Uh, let's let's start off with the deductible part of the self-employment tax. So that usually is going to be applicable if you're obviously if you're paying self-employment kind of taxes, which is normally or self-employment income that you have. If you have a Schedule C business, that's the most common type of example. So so if, we, if I go back up to the page one, I'm going to say, what if my income is not from W-2 wages, but from a Schedule C? Let's make that change. And we'll see all there'll be a whole bunch of different adjustments, which we'll get into more with the business income. But just to get an idea of this now, let's say that we don't have any income here, but we have a sole proprietorship business. And so we'll put it that into the Schedule C business income. I'll just gonna just for the purposes of the example, we'll just put a hundred thousand here. And obviously we would have deductions and whatnot, but I'm just gonna say a hundred thousand, keeping it simple going back to the forms. So now all this other stuff happens, right? So for, for example, I've got the income here of the 100,000 flowing in from the Schedule C. So, so we'll talk more about that later because that's not where our focus is. Where focus is on the adjustments. And then we've got this adjustment. Now, where did that come from? Like I didn't put anything into the adjustment here. And if I go into the Schedule 1, page number two, that's where our focus is, the deductible part of the self-employment tax. But to understand that, we got to know, well, what is self-employment tax and why am I getting a deductible part of it? <laughs> well, that doesn't make any sense. So notice that what they're trying to do is if you go into the self-employment tax over here, the schedule SE, this is the self-employment. 
this is basically the equivalent of Social Security and Medicare if you're an employee. So if you're an employee, then you pay half of Social Security and Medicare. The government pays half of Social Security and Medicare. They report that and do the withholdings of it, the employer does, and then they report it on the W-2. Doesn't normally have an impact so much when we do the data input to file the return because it's a flat tax, therefore easy to calculate, and we already paid it. So it's just an informational type of thing. If, however, you're in a Schedule C business, then then when we when we actually do the tax return, we not only have to consider the calculation of the income tax, but the self-employment tax, the equivalent of the self-employment that, that the IRS wants to hold you responsible for, which if you were a W-2 employee would have been taken out of your income by your employer. Not only that, but the self-employment tax usually has an employee portion and an employer portion. In other words, you working for an employee an employer as an employee results in them having to not only take your self-employment tax out of your wages and pay to the government, but also to pay their own half of self-employment tax. So now the problem is for the IRS, well, what if you're a sole proprietorship, then you're not paying any self-employment tax or payroll taxes. So, so that means we're going we're gonna to charge you the self-employment tax. And you would think, well, then it would only, it would be fair then maybe to only charge me one or the other, maybe like the employee portion or the employer portion. But no, they basically charge you both. They, they say any net income on your Schedule C business is basically kind of like you are the employee of your business and the owner of the business. Therefore, you're paying both kind of like the employee and employer portion of self-employment tax. We'll talk more about that later, but that's the general idea. So you see that then on page two of the form 1040, so, and this is what you always have to keep aware of when you're talking to clients. They're going to say there's an income tax, but then there's this other tax that's on the books, which is self-employment tax, which is huge, right? That could be a very significant uh, tax, very <laughs> burdensome tax that we have there. And it also flows through to, you know, to Schedule 2 here, where we have uh, the, other, the other taxes for the self-employment tax. So then, and that's, that Schedule 2 is flowing into the form... 1040 page two and that's adding adding to the tax but let's say you were a schedule like a like a c corporation a normal corporation you would have you would have that tax applicable but you'd get to deduct the employer portion of it normally because you deduct the portion of taxes that was your employer so you say well you should get a deduction for half of the tax but i can't deduct the self-employment tax on schedule c because the Schedule C, like the net income, is what I calculated the self-employment tax on. You'd end up with a circle reference. So what ends up happening is that you then get the deduction on Schedule 1, uh, page number 2. So Schedule 1, page number 2. So how does, how does all this work? They're trying to mirror kind of an employee-employer situation as if on a sole proprietorship, you were the employee and employer. So they're taking your net income from self-employment of the 100,000, and this would be net, not gross. So if I had expenses, it would be the net generally. They're calculating self-employment based on both the employee and employer portion in general, charging you the tax, which you'll see on page two of the 1040, adding that on, tacking it on to, this, to the income tax that you're gonna be paying. But they also get to deduct half of it for income tax purposes which you see on schedule one, schedule one, uh, schedule one here, page number two, that's 7,065. This is what we're focusing in on here. We'll dive more into this whole kind of thing when we get into the schedule C uh, business, but that's the general idea. If I was to kind of mirror this on my worksheet, look at see how much more complicated it gets. I'm gonna say, okay, the income is not coming from the W-2, the income's coming from the Schedule C. So Schedule C income, that pulls into the first page of the Form 1040. So we've got that now, and then we're gonna have the additional tax. So the additional taxes that are gonna be imposed here. And you could kind of calculate the additional tax here, but I'm just gonna put it in place for now. We might do more calculations on it later, but we could see it calculated on Form SE or page two. That additional tax is the 14 uh, 129 14 129 so i'll put 14129 which flows on to the first page of the 1040 
and and the additional taxes here and then the adjustment half of that's deductible so if i then go to my adjustments to income i'm going to take this out and i'm going to move this down give me some more room give me a little room my elbows i can't stretch my elbows out i need some elbow room this is going to be self employment tax i already have it up here so you could do it this way this is going to be equal to the tax that you calculated and the additional taxes self-employment tax here here divided by two half of it should be deductible above the line so if i go back to page one now i've got the 100,000. half of the self-employment tax is deductible 7065 bringing us to the 92 936 92 936 if i go to page one so there's the 92 936 then we've got the standard deduction at the 12550 and then we also have this qualified uh, business income deduction we'll talk more about that later i'm just going to plug it in for now when we get to this to the schedule c we might dive into that in a bit more detail but that's going to be 16077 16077 that's going to give us to the 64309 643098 rounding difference that's okay page two is going to be the calculation of the tax 9900 tax calculated 9900 that's the income tax and then we have the additional tax we already put in place of the 14 the 14129 so total tax is at the 2429 at this point 2429 at this point in time so you can see there's a whole host of other things that just happened the software helping us out with it but if you don't understand it you're not going to be able to explain it to people right it's just going to be a magic bunch of stuff that just happened right there that that's going to add on that's why the schedule c could add a significant amount of complexity now let's go back to the schedule one and then go down to page two and say say that okay what if we have then uh, a self-employed sep simple and so on so remember that if you worked as an employee then you might have access to a 401k plan for for example or a 403b which allows you to put money away for retirement and get a deduction for that when you put the money in but if you're if you're not working for an employee that provides you a 401k or a 403b then you might be able to put money into an ira and get say just an ira deduction which is down here and which we'll talk about later but the ira deduction has a has a limitation a smaller limitation that's why the 401k is one reason the 401k is going to, it could be quite beneficial as as a benefit if you're self-employed you're like well i don't want to be stuck with the ira deduction i'd like to, to have a higher limit maybe of what i can put in but i don't want to put a 401k plan into my sole proprietorship business because those are way too complex and i got to deal with way too much you know admin stuff to do that so the in between is to is to set something up that's a little bit more simplified like a sep or a simple or a qualified plan and that allows you to put money into it as well so notice if you're in a schedule c business these kind of questions start to come up tax planning questions like that possibly bookkeeping questions and questions about self-employment tax schedules about estimated payments in the future so a lot more consulting could take place is much more likely to be needed in if you're dealing with business kind of entities okay so then if i jump over to that one i could say okay well what if we had a sep uh, and that we're going to put in let's say it's a sep and let's say that i just maximize it i'm going to maximize it here and if you have more questions about them you could do of course your research for a sep and a simple and the differences between the two which might be best for particular organizations that's a whole topic in and of itself related to business uh, schedule c type businesses as well we might touch on that a little bit more when we get to the schedule c at least and then if i jump on over you could see the amount of the deductible that it maxed out at the software did is much higher than what it would max out if we had just like an ira uh, type of deduction if we qualified for the ira so now we've got that included as well obviously in order to take advantage of these retirement plans you'd have to have cash flow to do and which is often a problem for individuals and uh, corporations who are trying to put that cash flow to work either on the personal or business side but in any case so that totals up now to the to the 25 6, uh, 52, pulling over to the 1040 so now on the 1040 we've got the 100,000 we've got the 25 uh, 652 
And then if I mirror that on my software, on my side, I'm going to say this is self-employed, SEP, simple, so on. So that'll be over here. And I'm going to say adjustments. So this will be self-employed, employed, SEP, simple, simple, and so on. And that I said was we maxed it out at the 18587. 18587, making that blue and bolt and bracketed, checking the spelling on it. Did you spell it right? You're darn right I did. My spelling's nice. improving as we speak. We're gonna sum that up then. It's gotta I gotta add that into my totals. 25 to six, six twenty six fifty-two, pulling that over to the first page. So there's the 100,000 minus the 25,652 gets us to the 74,349. So I can mirror that over here and say, does that work? We got the 74,349, 12,550 standard. And then the business, the business income, 12,360. So we've got that. This should be 12,360 now, bringing the taxable income to the 49,439. So 49,439 off by a dollar rounding. That's okay. Page two, calculating the tax, 6622. If I did, so 6622, calculated there. And then the self-employment tax, which we still have on, on play. Notice the self-employment tax isn't being affected by some of the deductions we're taking, which are deductions for the federal income tax, which again, drives business owners crazy because they're like, you know, I, you could get this down to basically, you know, pretty a reasonable number. And you're like, but what about the self-employment tax? What, you know, and that's at the 14, uh, 129 and gets the total tax to the 12, 20,751. So 20,751 here that we can see. So I did that fairly quickly and we're relying on the software to some degree to do some of these calculations. And obviously there's a lot of components being involved when we add the schedule C but then that's just kind of the general idea of those of those items. Obviously, any of those items that apply, you would want to be diving into a bit more research because when we're dealing with, like I said, the this, this sole proprietorship, more time will typically be needed for counseling type of things, uh, especially with you know retirement. What type of retirement plans would be beneficial for the business, and and obviously more complications are going to be involved with deductions and self-employment tax and and that kind of stuff as well.